welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with you, our tribe. That's it. That's all I got. That's it. Mm-hmm. No soliloquy. No. No. No long diatribe. No, no. Pledge of allegiance. No. No nothing. No, I'm too tired for all. Too tired. For all that. Yeah. So, tired vibes. Pregnant, pregnant, and tired vibes. I guess we could we could call this one. Mm-hmm. Um. Episode thirty six of Rush Vibes. Mm-hmm. Um. Still amazes me every time we get we get on this thing and we say episode X because uh, even when we were recording a year ago around this time, there was still like that little voice of of doubt in the back of my head. Like, man, I don't know if we're really going to go through with this. I don't know if we're really going to get a website, a URL, EIN, cameras. But we did it. And here we are, 36 episodes later. So that's awesome. You um, did it because, again, as I've emphasized, if it was up to me, this this thing would be recorded on uh, audio. The iPhone 12. And the audio. Oh wait, no one has an iPhone 12. My iPhone, whatever XR, um, and I probably wouldn't have figured out how to even turn it into an official podcast. I would just feel like sharing it on IG. Like, uh, I don't know. Here's a. I think I think you uh, don't give yourself nearly enough credit i think you could have figured it out if you wanted to but luckily i didn't have to you have me and i did all the figuring out and also i want to i want to put a really big huge apology out to anybody who only listens to our podcast and doesn't actually watch us on youtube because apparently for about the last six episodes or so uh, they haven't all been pushing to all the platforms so i think we got all of them except last week's on apple so it was relatively current. But Spotify, I think our last episode that posted Spotify was like June 2nd. Oh. <laughs> so my bad. Any, any, any of our, our loyal Spotify listeners, all, all three of you. So um, it has since been corrected. Uh, it was in a total uh, human error editor mistake. So I've since learned from my, uh, my failures. And, and they will be pushed regularly uh, as we proceed forward. Uh, you guys can expect us to go until about what do you say next week October. <laughs> October. Uh, we've been going strong for pretty much. If you count all the episodes that we recorded that you guys haven't heard, which are fantastic, by the way, they're not. They're they're amazing. They really are. We have been doing this every week since last August. since last. I think, is it August? Yeah, since August. since last August, so almost almost a full year. So, uh, when baby rushing number three shows up, we will be taking a bit of a hiatus. I's uh, tired. Jess is tired. Uh, I'm sure I will be, and um, we'll we'll pop in and out here on IG and Facebook. We'll do some lives. Maybe we'll drop some some quick vibes on YouTube. But for the most part, uh, you probably won't see us until maternity vibes. <laughs> Probably won't see this until 2022. Maybe we'll have a fill-in. Maybe we'll have Solace fill-in because she's been... Solace could fill-in. She's been talking about how, you know, I'm going to do a podcast again and I need to be on there and they need to hear me. Who they is, I don't know. Everyone that's been missing her. her. Uh, And if you watch that or listen to Solace's episode, you'll understand why that reference is really funny. Um but yeah, we have been going hard, and there have been some weeks that I've been really tired, and I've been hoping for the, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna run a rerun this week. <laughs> haven't gotten that. Yeah, the same TV, baby. We ha- have the luxury of reruns. Haven't gotten that. I listen to some podcasts that they they run reruns. They'll like do a live intro and just explain, like, hey, got a lot going on. We're just gonna hit you with one of our oldies but goodies. Nothing. Nothing stops this train. Not even babies. Well, they will. But yeah. I'm I'm hopping. You know, you know how dedicated we are, and there's a few listeners who know this. Um, anyone who really pays attention knows this. But I, we, before last week, had not been together for two weeks, and yet we still dropped 
three Rush Vibes episodes. Mm -hmm. I had a couple people ask me, like, so... I was in Florida. How did you guys pull that off? Jessica was in North Carolina. And we yet, was tired. <laughs> okay. We didn't skip a beat because nothing stops this train. Over dedication. We weren't, we weren't going to come at y'all with no, no, no fake Jessica's here. I'm in Florida doing the, the Zoom video conference with the WAC hotel Wi-Fi. So I just look all pixelated. No, we weren't going to do that. We we're going to bring y'all the purest of pure Rush Vibes experiences. That's how dedicated we are. So what we did is we recorded three episodes. It was it four? It might three episodes in like two nights, I think. Yeah, it was back rough. to back one night, and then and then the last episode on on one night, and then I edited both of them in a hotel in Florida on horrible Wi Fi. Didn't even have the the internet jack for me to use the Ethernet connection. It was it was rough. It was a struggle. I was tired of talking. <laughs> It's like I don't, I don't have anything, yeah, anything left, any more was, energy to speak. But a lot. so pre pre recorded vibes, uh, mind you, were for the, for the last three weeks. But we're back in the flesh, in real time, and here we are for y'all. Uh, quick shout out to um, Seven O Four Shop and uh, Autism Charlotte. They've partnered up to uh, bring attention to the organization. Autism Charlotte. Uh, we have some family members um, who are autistic, so uh, we went ahead and supported the the movement, supported both brands. I'm a big fan of 704 Shop. A lot of the stuff that we've worn, uh, we've bought from them. Um, so, you know, we're always about supporting local, uh, supporting small businesses, supporting, you know, black entrepreneurs. So uh, if it fit right in. So, uh, yeah, so this is this is one of the designs. I believe they're all sold out. You can try to go on 704shop.com and get you one, but I think they're all gone. Jess has one. She's just not wearing it tonight. Um, so I would have had to go back. Okay. Keep, she would have had to go back upstairs. Yeah. So keep an eye, keep an eye on the um, on 704shop for, for more dope uh, drops. Not a, not a sponsor, not affiliated by any way. We're just appreciative of uh, the good stuff that they're doing here. But we're willing to be a sponsor. We're willing to be sponsored. I'm going to say, uh, no, we're, no, we're definitely not willing to be somebody's <laughs> sponsor. We are sponsor. willing to be sponsored. We're willing to be sponsored. <clears throat> So uh, last week we were at the beach. I was in, well, Jessica and the girls were at the beach. Uh, I was in Tampa, Florida. I was doing some some training for uh, in my, my new job, as I mentioned here probably two or three episodes ago. Recently switched jobs. So I did some training down in Florida. Um, my trip ended up getting cut short. So I ended up driving uh, nine and a half hours to uh, Ocean Isle, North Carolina to join my lovely wife and two daughters and the unknown. <laughs> and we, uh, we hung out with um, some, some close friends of ours and had a little bit of a getaway. I was still working, <laughs> so I was pretty much either outside working on the laptop or closed up in a room, but, you know, I had the evenings. But it was good. It was good to get away. Uh, it was good to be away from home with the family. It was like a like a, a quasi vacation for us uh, because we were away from the house. The girls got to go to the beach, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just us. Um, it was a very brief, it's very brief, especially my, my portion of it, the portion that I experienced and I was still working. So it wasn't like a full on vacation, but it was, it was nice. Change of scenery definitely helps. Mm -hmm. um, and I hadn't been to Ocean Isle before North Carolina. So we're not going back. We're not going back. I'm not going, not going Why not? Back. Okay, so this uh -oh. is this is what went down. Tea tail vibes. So tea tails. I should get a spoon. Can you guys hear the tinging? So you know, David comes up. We had a babysitter who had come along with us. Uh, six kids in total, uh, ranging from Savi to I think the oldest kid was seven or eight. Um, yeah, I think. Solace and Eden Rose are both five. There was another little girl. She was four. And then Evelyn is three, if I'm not mistaken. And then you've got Savi, who's 18 months. So, you know, the bigger kids, semi-self-sufficient. Um, they just need, like, eyes making sure they're not, you know, diving. Anyway, so we have a babysitter. We had... Um, one of the moms had decided, you know, we got the babysitter. We're going to do one grown-up dinner night just us leave the kids at home so 
I made the kids mac and cheese. We we fed them. We got like we had taken they had been taken to the beach and then been taken to the pool and then walked back from the pool to the like they had been worn out to encourage an early bedtime. So we uh, one of the uh, one of the other moms had looked up a restaurant, said it had good reviews. So we're like, cool, let's go. We get to this restaurant, and it was there was there was. <laughs> There was no melanin in sight, even from the parking lot, like no potential melanin in sight. Um, but whatever. We were like, hey, we're here. It's North Carolina. It's America. Like, you know, it's America. It's America. <laughs> I, I was I was very naive in the moment. So Mer- I was like, America. my philosophy is America, it don't matter America. where you go. There's always one point five of us. Doesn't matter where. There's always at least one point five of us. This, my theory has now been debunked. So we walk inside, like we're all in like good spirits. I'm happy. Haven't seen my husband in three weeks. He's here. You know, all I wanted, like every time he'd ask me what I want, I just said, you know, I just want to do a family vacation. I just want to take the girls to the beach. I really wanted Savi to have like her own little, her own trip before she became a big sister. Not that she's going to remember, not that she's going to know. It's, it's, it's purely for me, but it was like, okay, this was able to happen. Divine intervention. That's great. Get to this restaurant. You know, we walk, this restaurant's like three stories high, like right on the water. Like it's got a pier. It's got like a fake shark hanging upside down. Uh, it was supposed to be a fun night. You know, you know, they'd play some Jason Aldean. We'd do some, you know, some kicking cotton eye Joe dances, good stuff. So we, you know, we had one of the the moms who had found the restaurant. She went in first. Um, She happens to be white. She went in first to, like, see if she could get us a table. I think she had read that they don't take reservations, so you have to, like, get there, take your spot. Cool. She goes in first while we go to park. Um, We link up with her and then find out that they're not taking names on the list anymore. Because it is, to be fair, it it was we did get there within an hour of them Closing. closing. So, okay, cool. So like we didn't we weren't fu- we weren't fussing about this. We understood. So we went to the very top. Um there's a bar, there's outdoor seating, and there are two bartenders. So you know, the, there's a hostess upstairs too, which is kind of confusing. But she tells us like she reiterates like no, we don't have um we're not taking any more names. But the bartenders say, you know, there were like four tables that were empty outside and there were six ta- seats at the bar that had been cleared. So we were, myself and Leah, we were holding the ta- the chairs because we didn't want to risk not being able to sit. Shout out to Leah. Shouts to Leah. Um, but then the bartender said, hey, you guys can sit at the tables outside, but we don't have a designated server who's going to come out and bring you, like take your orders, bring you your drink. So you would have to come into the bar and do that. And we're like, okay, that's fine. That's That's no big deal. Mind you, like we feel the the looks, um, you the glances, the, the oh, they're far from home. Um, just you, you you feel that you can sense it. It's it's just a it's a, and they weren't talking about Spider Man. Yes, it's a, it's a black <laughs> instinct. You know when people have spotted your blackness and are so while while we're this is all happening. Um, we've confirmed the table. So we're like, cool, let's order drinks. And I'm still trying to find, you know, that person who's half black, who is black that I'm trying to see if someone in the kitchen is going to pop out. There's a bus boy, anybody like, I just need, I just need one confirmation. This person is, is either off today or just doesn't exist at this establishment. So Leah goes, she puts her bag down to hold the table because again, we're under the impression that we can sit at any of these, what, three or four tables that are outside, um, as long as we come to the bar. Both bartenders confirm. So they order some shots, and then they order, I think David gets himself a drink. Uh, And so we're waiting for all of these. We're looking at menus. We're trying to, you know, get our orders figured out. And this woman comes inside, and she's, I'm still seating these tables, blah, 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 like just starts going off. And we're like, uh, hold on. Chip behind the bar over here just said we could sit at was these. Was his name t- actually Chip? I don't know. He just seemed uh, like a Chip. He did we were in like Ocean I, could, I, I could believe that his name was Chip. So Chip and then the other bartender, Karen. Whose name is literally <laughs> her Karen. Her name was Karen. Actually, Karen. 
So, so we're trying to explain to her that they, so Chip threw Karen all the way under the bus, picked her up and then threw her back the other way under the bus. And he was like, nah, I didn't say anything. He's pointing at her. He's like, she said it. She said it. And she was not me. She just takes it. Um, so we're like, okay, whatever, fine. Of course, the chairs that we were saving had been taken because, you know, there were six chairs at a bar that's not taking seating. So those were seized. Um, so, seized. <laughs> so, so Karen, um, so it, 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 it's not really turning into a, a thing, but it was a thing just the way the manager, her tone of voice, the way she... It was very obvious that if we weren't who we were, the, the, her approach would have been completely different. Um, and it was upsetting because we were told one thing and then the person who told us one thing essentially put the blame on someone else and denied it completely. So Karen, who I'm not sure that she's an ally Karen or if she was just trying to, you know, just save face. Um, she was like, hey, we've got this, you know, this little back patio area. It's it's like it could be like your own private party back here. Okay. So in my definition, it really just turned into a colored only section yeah. because it was like the back side of the restaurant, the tables and seats that were there were wet. Um, in my opinion, if it was worth it, like people would have been out there, um, but no one was out there and it was, it just killed the mood. So, you know, Leah and I, I feel like Le- I can't remember who else. We just call name drop. On the- we are. Okay. Uh, so Leah was just kind of like, hey, we're here. Let's, you know, if these white people are going to be uncomfortable, like let them be uncomfortable. Mind you, we have two white people with us. Um, just Cynthia's husband is white. Um, and then <laughs> what, is that? what does that he's mean? Not, he's not really. He's white. I mean, like he's absolutely white. He's visibly white, but Ian's always had, always had some soul in him. White soul. Nah. <laughs> Like, there are white people with soul, but that doesn't give them black soul. Um, he's, pass, he's, he's passing white. He's, he's white. He's say. white, white. Um, and then um, Deanna and her husband, and Deanna's white, so she's the one who had found the restaurant. So Deanna's husband is is visibly upset. And, you know, David was in his own little world. I don't know I where was, so he look, was. So look, let's, let's take a quick quick 30 second, right? David's inner, inner, inner mission. So... When all this is going on, now keep in mind, we've discussed this here on Rush Vibes, and I am very oblivious, especially in public, right? I, as my wife just said, I was definitely in my own little world. So they got some shots of tequila. I threw, and I don't drink tequila, but we were in the moment. I was like, okay, for the occasion, I'll take a shot. And then I got a, I got a single of Woodford. So I was good. They put us on the little back patio. Colored I was only like, patio. the colored only patio. I was like, you know, I mean, I'm colored, so <laughs> I'm just going to go out here. So. I'm sipping. I got the lane, but the view is nice because it's it's on the water. So behind is there's there's a lake or river or whatever. Um, and there then, are piers. And there are piers, and then you can kind of see the the really nice houses that are uh, not too far from the distance. So it was a nice view. So I was I had the little, you know, I had the little lean with my with my beverage. I'm not not promoting, um, and I had my sunglasses on. So I was I was Gucci. Like I was primed for an IG shot. For an Instagram shot, I didn't. I, Nobody took were, it, but I was primed because we were dealing with shot. racism. While so David. while I'm, I'm in my element, you know, I'm getting my my Michael B on. They're like, <laughs> they're going through it, but I was chilling. I was good. Go ahead. Well, they're having the Million Man March, and this dude's trying to figure out just not, just it to the point where I had I was to trying like, to decide if I was going to get the get the, the grilled special, chicken or the fry. the special or the cat or the, or the or the grilled chicken sandwich, and I'm. It got to it was, the point where at struggle. one point I looked up and I thought, like, where is David? And, oh, he's over there just leaned. He had the leg, the you know, the, the right leg crossed over the left elbow. That lean. was good. Just in mind in his own business. Didn't didn't seem concerned. Was perfectly content with eating there. And I, for a moment I was too. But I looked up at Deanna's husband and his physical expression. And he had sunglasses on. He was just like, I'm not comfortable here. And then that got me thinking. I was like, you know, they don't have an open kitchen. I don't know how my food's being prepared. I'm not confident. Like, I, I just lost confidence in that location. And honestly, it felt like the pre-dinner to a MAGA rally. So I was like, y- y'all, we can leave. So so I, ha- I was actually the one who insisted that we leave because I was like, you know what? He's not comfortable. And one thing about it. I was comfortable. I, I wasn't even concerned about him because he, he clearly would have been just fine anywhere. 
Um, yeah, okay, I had my Woodford. I was good. So I, I, you know, I've watched enough black trauma movies to just, you know, and you know, in that situation, even if you do have two white people with you, they are not. They were they were not together, so you know that all the people who are judging your blackness are like, oh, and these these Negro lovers, not even loyal to their own kind. The thoughts and opinions <laughs> expressed by Jessica are, are the not, thoughts of white not, supremacists in America. So you know, I was the, like, oh, these oh. are supposed to be our protect, like you know. Our white people, we got we got some of y'all with us, so we're safe. No, we weren't safe. It belonged so, to her and her than herself. They so are not I, indicative so we had of like, the overall I views of us here at Rush down, Vibes. And I was just like, you know what? We don't need to be here. We don't need to put our money into this establishment. When you address someone the tried, hate mail. Someone tried to use the logic to to of her. how many times do you spend your money at with a company or with a person or place and you don't know. And it's like, yeah, it's one thing if you don't know someone's background and, you know, you're innocently spending your dollar. But when this this place is visibly going out of their way to make us uncomfortable, that that's enough. That was just another thing. And just the idea of, oh, hey, you can go stand out back. Um that was that was just a little demeaning for me. So that's the first time I've been in that situation. Yeah, they had a little, little broken water fountain back there. <laughs> it was all rest. I'm just playing. It, it, it was it, it was, it was rough. Fountain. So and we would still have to come inside to place our orders and everything. Leah had come inside at one point to get menus, and I guess she didn't close the sliding door because she was coming right back outside. And some man was like turning red, and he was like, "Do you plan on closing the door?" And she was like, "I'm just going to get menus, but if you want to close the door, you can. I would. I'll be right back." Um, so it was just uncomfortable. So we were like, okay, we're going to leave before, you know, just the MAGA meeting before the, 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 the cloths come out, the burning crosses. That seems a little, let's like, just, that let's, seems a little excessive. Let's just get out of here. There's little, water little right there. They could just dump us in the water. They already had a little, a, a shark that was hanging upside down. So they already have the equipment if that's what they were trying to do. Let's go. We left and, you know, we're trying to find a place. It's weird because it's summer at the beach and most of these restaurants are closing at 8 o'clock. And it's like 740 at this time. So we don't have a big window of time. Luckily, you know, the Yelper and me, I get on. I find a place that's in another town called Calabash. So we're like, okay, it's open till 10. Let's give this place a try. Um, Funny story. So they were like, we're going to send the pregnant woman and the white woman in to see, to get us a table. So as we're walking in, I look over at Deanna and I say, wait, they're going to think we're a pregnant interracial lesbian couple. Um, so then they're going to like, if they're just as bad as the other place, like that's, that's not a great way to, to set it off. So we open the door. She walks in first and she goes, Hey, we have black people in our party. Are you guys okay with that? And there are three hostesses host a host and two hostesses at the stand and they look at us like we were not expecting those words to come out of your mouth and they were like of course we have no problem we're we're colored friendly (laughs) so we we explain everything to them it turned out i think the host he was gay so you know he's kind of like he understands just discrimination to an extent um so he you know he's he's taken aback by this the the other two girls are just like oh my gosh we're so sorry where was this oh like we want to make sure we don't go there we're you anyway they were like (laughs) so she's emphasizing she's like you know the black people we have is not just her we have other black people so like Maybe you'll make an exception for one, but there are others accompanying us. But they were fine. They seated us outside. Um, so we had this beautiful view of the, what was it, the Calabash River or something like that. Um, water. Place served oysters. The ser- our the server, body of water. her name was Victoria. She was the sweetest thing. Shout out to Victoria. It was amazing. The manager, uh, I'm just going to drop their name. They were the oyster, oyster Rock at Calabash. So if you're in Calabash, in that Myrtle, Shallot, North Carolina area, go to go there. I think it's pronounced shallow. That's what that's what Justin, the manager, said after you had meant some after you guys had said shallot. He said shallow. But oh, really? I don't know. I mean, it's spelled like it's one or the other, like so. shallot. So yeah. I was saying shallot. Um, so we went there. We had an amazing meal. Just a great night. The music. 
that's what you always have to look out for the music because as soon as we got there they were playing stevie wonder they transitioned to michael we couldn't remember which michael song so we don't know if it was black michael or white michael regardless they were playing michael um there was one artist they kept playing that was just exciting leah i think it was gregory something um I can't remember his name, but the music was diverse and it had soul to it. And the staff was from different places. One guy uh, was from Maryland. Uh, the manager. Also pronounced Merlin. The manager was from Florida. Um, and our server, she was from New York. I think upstate New York. 90 seconds. So um, it was just it. the night that started off uncomfortable just shifted and turned into like such an amazing evening. Um, so much so that I, we had a, re a women's retreat after that we ended up going there for dinner because we had such great treatment. So that's where I'll cut since we have only 90 seconds. Right. And I think we'll, uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back and uh, we'll wrap this part of the uh, episode up, this discussion. So stay tuned. All in all, I say that to wrap up that I'm pretty confident we were in a sundown town where it was just like black people don't be out after the sun goes down. So I, I do have a follow up story. So after that experience, I said, if I see any black people, I'm going to tell them not to go eat there because of our experience. I'm trying to, you know, look out for a brother, look out for a sister. So I go to Publix and I see this black woman and her two daughters. They're probably like maybe 12 and 13. Um, so initially, you know, I'm, mind, I'm getting my stuff and I wasn't going to say anything, but I was like, you know what? What if they go? What if something happens to them? And then I have to live with that for the rest of my life. I'm not going to do it. Um, so I walk, I, I, we happen, I said, if they pass, if they come by my, my path, I will, I will ask, I will talk to them. So, you know, they, I happened to be in the, the meat counter and I was picking out some steaks and the lady pulls like right behind me. So I said, excuse me, ma'am, are you from here? And she was like, yeah. So initially I was going to like, you know, pull out. I was like, okay, she's a local. So she knows. And I said, oh, okay. Well, have you ever heard of insert name of restaurant here and and she was like oh yeah we used to go there all the time and i was like wait what and she was like yeah we even have my dad had my dad's 70th birthday party there and i was like well are you sure we went to the same place so i'm like describing the the route of which it took for us to get there and she's like oh yeah it's got three stories it's right on the water and we were like yeah and i said so when was the last time you were there and she's like oh it's been a few years I was like, oh, okay, because we went there. We tried to go there last night, and I told her the whole story. And, you know, her eyes started, you know, to bug out. And she and she was just like, oh, well, the original owner, he died, and his son took over. So she thinks that his son's point of view um, and lifestyle is not as inclusive as his father's was. And I told her, I said, you know, we got out of there before the MAGA rally started because there, there, there was nobody. I need, you, I, need, I need you to stop with this. MAGA rally that okay. what did not or was never going to happen. Before the white supremacist sacrificial meeting started. Um, so she was she was actually really surprised. I was like, don't go back. And then I said... Get out. <laughs> I said, don't, I said, don't, Get out. don't go back. And I said, you all have a good one. Um, and then I, I went. But she was like, maybe one of... In that particular town, maybe one of like seven and a half black people I saw... But then I went to the super Walmart, the town over, and it was the most diverse place ever. I, I mean, diverse. I was seeing mixed kids. I saw Indians. I saw um, and Indians from India, not Native American Indians. Um, Indians. I saw, you know, black people. I was uh, Chinese, like Asian people. Like they were all over. So I was like, OK, so I just need to stay at this Walmart if I want to see people that look like me. And everyone was nice. Like even the like the old white people were nice. Like I, I went to grab something and like two things fell of broccoli and this old white lady, she was like, oh, they're all falling on you. And I was like, yeah, they need to stop. Like just, just something silly. But <laughs> but like she was friendly. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I still think it's a sundown town. So if you go to what chalet, shallot, shallow, um, just don't just run on over the border and go to Myrtle if you need to do stuff after hours. Um, 
it was it was a semi decent place. It was a semi decent um, beach. There was a black family on the beach that I saw. They were maybe a few feet away from us the one day that I went to the beach. Um, but I wasn't even thinking about race at the beach. I just happened to notice like, oh, other black people. Uh, but I think they had gone to the ladies during the retreat session of the the, the stay had gone to the beach and I think they had said that they had gotten some looks and people were, were staring at them. But, um, the restaurant we went to, uh, Oyster Rock there, there were several black employees. Um, there were like, there were black people around. So you knew like this was a, a safe space, um, at night, but yeah, so that's, that's our, that's our experience. I've never truly, I've been fortunate enough to not have to say that I've never truly, truly experienced like blatant like been in a place where it was like blatantly obvious that i'm not welcome here because of my color usually there's first time yeah usually there's like you know there's one or two people who are like "Mm, let me like tuck my purse whatever um but like we're an entire establishment like record scratched and everyone was just kind of like we're not welcome around these parts um i i don't know that i can say and i i work in i worked in nascar like NASCAR country is not is not for us. Um, but even working in NASCAR and, you know, spending hours, weekends, weeks around, you know, NASCAR rednecks, I've still never been yes. I've it's still un- never been necessary. I've still never been made to feel so uncomfortable and inferior. So um I'm definitely going to do a lot of research when time comes to buy my beach house and make sure that the beach that I... Your beach house? My beach house. Um, You got beach house money? Do you? I will. All right. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to do a lot of research. Only when you're going to be able to afford the shallow North Carolina. I'm not going to... Nope. No Ocean Isle. Nothing. I'm not going back there if I can avoid it. Um, but Shallow. yeah, we survived by God's grace. We were, we went in and we we came out safely. So uh, I have I have, you know, because I'm part of the podcast too. I have uh, I have some thoughts about our experience outside of my me being in the zone and enjoying my my whiskey. You know, what's, what's messed up is that uh, Chip and Karen they set me up for failure. Right. Because they they sold us a bill of goods. They had us, you know, they gave us this false hope. So I took the tequila shot thinking I would have a meal in an extended period of time to eat my food, you know, to to pair with my with my with my bourbon. So when we went out back, I was like, okay, so we're going to order. We're going to send, you know, one person in with all the orders. We're going to get our food out here. We're going to eat. We're going to be good. But then when they're talking about let's go, I'm not going to waste a ten dollar, you know, glass of, of of Woodford. So I had to throw it back. And yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, me and Jess. I, you know, I, Jess has been mentioning lately that I'm not as young as I used to be, and I need to be more health conscious, and I need to slow down my intake of spirits and cigars. So I have committed, except for when we're recording, because we usually record. We can record anywhere between Friday and, and Monday. Uh, usually, I will not drink during the week. So my tolerance isn't what it used to be. Like peak pandemic, David, I'd have been fine. I could have thrown a couple of them back. Now, not so much. So I took the shot of tequila. I threw back my Woodford and I was just, <laughs> I was just probably why I didn't know what was going on. I was just, I was in the wind. I was feeling good. I was feeling He was it. walking like 30 feet behind us talking about he's, he's, what would you say? Picking up the rear or something in the bringing up the rear. Yeah, yeah. I, had I, like, sure, I had to make sure. I had to make sure nothing popped off. Sir, you but I would have been no even if something did. <laughs> you I, I, I get snatched in the back of someone's pickup I, truck. I would have been. I would have been no good. Um, but it, you know, it's it's interesting how Jessica said it's the first time she'd been in a space where it was apparent that her kind or her presence uh, was either uh, unusual to the to the normal crowd or just outright unwelcome. Now, for me. I'm just used to it. <laughs> I, I just I've been in so many spaces throughout my life um, where you know you walk in and it's like record scratch, and everybody just turns and looks. Like people laugh at the 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 Jordan the or excuse me the uh, the portrayals in like Hollywood and movies and, and things like that. But like it's, it's legit. Like it happens. So you know, obviously you're at in a beach town. Uh, you don't see any. Anybody who looks like you, you're like, okay, I already know what this is going to be like. 
Um, I think what was I think what was different. I think where where it it was disrespectful. Or not that it all isn't disrespectful, but I mean, there's there are certain things that are just baked into the experience of being black in America, but uh, where it 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 hit hit me sideways was when uh, we were obviously told that we could go outside and and have those seats. Uh, that I wasn't involved in any of that, but I I was aware of what was going on. The way that the manager came in was just totally wrong, um, and like Jessica said, it's hard not to think or presume that had we been differently or have been more like the local crowd, uh, that probably would have been handled differently. Okay. These seats are for people who are on the waiting list. Fine. We didn't know that ask us or come in, you know, with a different tone, uh, different temperament. And then we could have, it, it all could have been resolved reasonably, but it wasn't. She just came in hot and heavy. She was like, I'm seeing these tables and blah, 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 blah. Chip through Karen under the bus, you know, and it was, it was all bad. So it's just, for someone who was who was there for a party of seven who, who was there willing to spend money i had the intent to spend money um i it, i find it curious that you would treat uh potential uh customers that way um and obviously they knew that we weren't locals so maybe that that's why they felt like they could treat us however because they knew it's not like we lived there but still you don't treat clients like that because you never know who's walking into your restaurant you don't know what kind of you know what kind of influence they have so that was that was you know, that was unfortunate, but, um, you know, it, 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 it I don't want to make it seem like it's okay for, for us to have those experiences. Cause it's, it obviously isn't. Um, but for me, it was just like, you know, I, I see what's happening. I see, I see this. I've seen, I know all these, I know these, <laughs> I've seen this movie before. Like mm-hmm. I know how it goes. So you know, it, it is what it is. But we we found another restaurant and they were much more welcoming. It was it was a better restaurant just overall. Yeah, quality. Um, higher quality. The service was much better. Um you know, the it was it was it was the the the, the environment, um, the setting, like Jess mentioned, you know, the backdrop off, you know, the water and it was just it was just a better place for us to go. So on, honestly it, it was like a blessing in disguise. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, uh, and then they shows, ended up they ended up going back. So yeah, it shows quality of business because you know we went with a party of seven, and then you know two days later came we back came with back more. with a party of nine. Came back, um, and that I mean, that's that's just telling that. And we're not talking about nine dollar plates, neither. No, Do, no, we're not talking about fifteen dollar plates because I got oysters Rockefeller both times. I'm not talking um, about twenty dollar plate. They, yeah. It was. I we, mean, the description spent, we, of food were like reduction, good, good money, nod, your fancy words. These aren't good, your, you know, your, 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 your clam basket and uh, your shrimp fritters. Good money was spent. Yes. So. So, I mean, it's, it's, it, but it definitely, I know it put a damper on me. I'm already, the thing about if you're in North Carolina and you're driving from, you know, the bigger metropolitan areas down to, you know, the coast. You're going through some tiny towns and, you know, being pregnant, I went down just myself and the girls because initially David wasn't supposed to be on this trip. So, you know, I was fearful because, you know, it's no secret a pregnant woman. I already have non-pregnant. I don't have the best bladder pregnant. My bladder is even worse. If I think of moisture, I need to use the bathroom. So I was definitely concerned about, okay, at what point, you know, I was calculating our trip. Okay. Use the bathroom at home. We, what city, town am I most comfortable? Like, how far can I go to stop and use the bathroom with the girls so that I can go the rest of the trip without having to stop? That was how I had to think because I was like, I'm a black, I'm, in this moment, I'm a single black female with two small children and I'm pregnant. And I don't, the last thing I want to do is stop at the wrong gas station, stop at the wrong restaurant, and be in a situation with my children that I cannot protect myself. Um, all because I needed to use the bathroom and I was naive to think that I can just stop anywhere. So fortunately, um, the last stop we made was in Monroe, which is where, um, David's, David's from his family's from shout out uh, union <laughs> County, baby. Um, I stand up. <laughs> we were, we were, I knew we needed to, eat. I'm actually from Virginia though. My yeah. dad's from union County. He's from Monroe. Um, Monroe. I knew we needed to eat. So, you know, we stopped at a McDonald's. I used the bathroom. I ended up using the bathroom twice. In the time that I used the bathroom, placed our order, used the bathroom again. So I was like, mommy, you just used the bathroom. And I was like, look, 
I'm trying to keep us alive. That's, that's my child. Um, Savi was just in her own world. So I was trying to get into the game, like the playhouse area. And she's like, I want to go play. Blah. And I was like, Sauce, you can't. And it wasn't until this guy was like, it's closed. And then I was like, oh, yeah, coronavirus. You, you can't use it anyway. And she was like, so I can't go play anyway. Um, but I had, to, I had to think like that. I had to think where is the furthest I, I am comfortable going that I feel is still populated enough that I'm safe to use the bathroom here. And, you know, for me, Monroe, which was is an hour outside of our home, like it's still it's. It, it's an area I'm familiar with and comfortable. But, you know, I still had to go two hours of a drive not stopping to use the bathroom because I just didn't want to take that chance. And then on the way home, David had left early. He left with the girls Thursday. I stayed um, because I was catering the, the retreat for the remainder of the weekend. And on the way back, like I was praying. I was like, Lord, please don't let me have to use the bathroom. And of course I was just the thirstiest thing in the world. Like I could not stay hydrated for anything. But my thought was I cannot afford to stop in any of these small towns on the way back because of the incident that confirmed why I felt that way coming down. So, you know, it's things that, you know, this is where, you know, people talk about, Oh, I don't have privilege. Well, like these are things that you don't have to think about when you're of different races where, you know, as a black woman, as I I don't want to speak for black men, but as a black man, potentially you have to consider like, is this a safe spot for me to stop? Um, I think on the way down, there were um, people had pulled over and there was a sunflower field. There were like three cars and, you know, they had stopped. They were taking pictures. And for a brief moment, I was like, oh, I should stop and let the girls take pictures. But then I remembered, I think she was on Family Matters, this actress, um, and she had gotten into, wow. yeah, the friend, um, <laughs> Family Matters. Lisa, Laura's friend, uh, they had, st- she and her fiance or husband were driving through South Carolina, they saw a cotton oh, field, in South Carolina. and they had never seen real cotton, so they stopped on the side of the road, and they were just, you know... I hate to say picking cotton, um, but well, then then what? You know what? I don't. I have no idea how the story's going to end, but they deserved it. So, you know, and and I guess cotton. some old, if I'm not mistaken, on, like man. some old, the man who owned the land or owned part of the land came out and he, you know, just berated them. May have had a shotgun. Like it was, it it turned into a whole mess. So that story popped into my head where I was like, man, there are these beautiful sunflowers. I could have stopped, you know, show like let the girls, you know, experience a field full of sunflowers, but I was like, nope, I'm not going to chance it. Like I have a to B and there's no a point one. Like it's just keep going. Uh, whereas some people don't have to think like that. You don't have to be concerned of where you stop to use the bathroom. You don't have to be concerned of, Oh, there's a field of sunflowers. I can stop and just look at them because no one sees you as a threat, whether you are one or not. Um, so yeah, so that was definitely something that gave me a new perspective. Um, and that's usually a part of the state I don't like traveling through anyway, um, just because it's so rural and rural places make me uncomfortable because of the connotation that was confirmed. Um, so yeah, that was that was our uh, restaurant in wherever we were, North Carolina. Yeah, it was um, it was kind of whack, but we ended up eating well. Yeah, because so I'm sure was- the food wouldn't have been good. Cause it was just like fried. Like yeah, and I, and I went. I went later to see um, if they had any bad reviews on like their their social media, or whatever. And then they, I like ran into like, or uh, I stumbled across like promotions. I guess they tried to do. I like, took pictures of their food, and it was like it like trash. Like yeah. Solace yeah. could Solace could could come in here and, and make something more presentable than this. So it is what it is. Uh, it's not really a loss for us. Um, like I said, we we ended up eating at a at a fine restaurant that uh, was very welcoming to us, and then. You know, they got the business for the uh, retreat when Jess and the rest of the ladies went back. So, you know, it is what it is. Keep it moving. Um, while we're on the topic of of race, you know, since we're talking about it, uh, and you mentioned Monroe, perfect segue. Like, it's just this, we just segue and all up in here. Um, I wanted to call attention to uh, something that a future guest uh, is a part of. Um, and it started from a fa- a simple and, and, and innocent Facebook comment. Um, Franco McGee, who is a uh, mentor of mine, a former high school basketball coach, friend of the family, uh, was commenting on a friend's post. I think it was like last summer, I think. 
I think it was last summer. Um, it was uh, some gentlemen, some black gentlemen who were uh, who were out golfing, and they had taken a picture afterward. Uh, and Franco was like, comment on the post. He was like, "Hey, that's what's up." Hashtag black golfers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, somebody, uh, <laughs> I don't know what her name is. We call it Karen. Jumped in the comments. It was like, "Hey, Franco, how about just golfers?" <laughs> why does that have to be? Why that? We all have oh a gosh. race problem, Franco. We got a heart problem and hey, y'all keep focusing on race we never go get past this it's not about black or white it's about what's in your heart that's how she was she didn't say all that but she was that class of per kind of that kind of class of person um so this actually it spread like wildfire because Franco's a councilman in monroe uh, city councilman so you know he knows a lot of people he's connected to a lot of people on facebook and people are in the comments blah 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 blah. so uh as as um we always talk about uh you know michelle obama was always talking about going high uh people talk about you know turning negativity into positivity kind of like that whole um go back to africa campaign that's been going on on social media i don't know if you're familiar with that um wait who started this campaign so there uh it was i don't know the go back to africa it's a black yeah, it's okay. it's it's yeah. an African it's okay. an African thing. So what they've done is they've taken you know how racist white people would be like, oh, let's go back to go back Africa. Africa. What they've done is they say, yes, let's go back to Africa, and then they focus on all the the beauty of the okay. continent because it is a very beautiful continent and it's the motherland. Even though people try to trash it and call it shithole and and whatnot. But anyways, um, so it's kind of akin to that. They took it hashtag Black Golfers, and there's actually been um, believe it's probably a nonprofit. Uh, let's tee off golf clinics. So it is for young black men. Uh, it's been held here. I think the first inaugural uh, event was held here in Union County last week, I believe, um, teaching young kids of color about golf. And they have like mentors, older people. Uh, Franco is a part of it. I don't know that he's not he's not the, the main one behind it, um, but it's, it's a beautiful thing. I've been uh, following it on social media. It's awesome. You can donate. I'll drop the link. Um, in the description, if you want to donate and sponsor a golfer, because this is something that's that's going to grow and it's going to be ongoing. Um, so um, it warms my heart. I love seeing stuff like this. And it it hits home for me because as I'm getting older, I, you know, I kind of want to get into golf. And, you know, let's let's just be real. Um, there are not a lot of black people who play golf well, and it, let alone you know, in amateur ranks and let alone, you know, professionally. So it's, it's nice to be able to find and grow community, um, in spaces where there's not a whole lot of us. So I think it's, I think it's cool turned, um, you know, turned a negative comment into something beautiful. Like it's just, it's just fantastic. So, um, let that be a lesson motivation. You know, you can, you can turn attacks, you can turn insults, you can turn them on themselves. Um, and you can actually put that negative energy, turn it into positive energy, um, and do some great things for the community. And, um, this is, this is an example of that. So I'll, I'll, uh, drop some links in the description. Um, we're going to get Frank on here really soon. Uh, he's going to be up for reelection this year. So even though it's not Charlotte Mecklenburg, still Union County, I got roots there. So, uh, we'll love to have him on. Um, so he can, uh, tell us a little bit about what he's doing. Cause he's done some big things down there since he's been been elected so looking forward to it did you have anything i saw you had your computer up earlier Were i you- was just pulling up um the current events that we may have missed you missed a lot because of pre-recorded vibes yeah and and because we were at the beach i i, I was intentional about not being on my phone you know, not I didn't watch the news. I I I think today is the first day I've my watched the news. My screen time went up 21%. Went up? Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, mine went down. Um, just because I, I just didn't feel... It was nice to kind of be disconnected um, and not know. Just, you know, the news is exhausting. What's happening in the world is exhausting. You know, this celebrity broke up with this celebrity. is back with this celebrity. It was just, it, it, it just gets old. Um, so I had even, you know, told the girls, only one really listens to me though, uh, that we were going to reduce just, you know, tablet screen time. And I was able to pull it off for a couple of days. Um, and then it was just, Savi was just so attached to me that I was like, look here, just take, take, thank you for Wi-Fi. Take your tablet and just give me five minutes to myself. Um, so I don't really know what's going on. I know, you know, they're doing the 
trial for the insurrection, alleged insurrection that did happen. Um, they cl- they concluded the Miami building collapse, which is unfortunate. Um, you well, know. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, but it's, it, an, it's it, unfortunate. No, the, I mean, the, yeah, it collapsed. Like the whole they scenario, were to, they had to, they had to determine that. No, they concluded the search and rescue. Oh, concluded. Okay, yeah. I thought you meant concluded that it collapsed. What happened was that it collapsed? No. I'm like, yeah, no, no they, we all they <laughs> they concluded the search and rescue. Uh, so yeah, that's, um, that's too bad. I don't know what the final number of of those lost were. I had heard a story that this one guy had. Like he had done dinner at his girlfriend's house with some friends and normally, you know, he works out early in the morning so he doesn't sleep over her house until weekends and she like randomly asked him to stay the night and he was in he his apartment is the built was in the building. Um, his phone had died by the time it came back on, he had like text and missed calls and voicemails, people trying to figure out if he was dead or alive. And, you know, I was like, Boy, you better get to Jared and um Put a ring on her finger because she, she saved your life. Mm. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean she's the one. You got to be careful with, with the attachment we have to people through trauma. It's uh, not always healthy. It's just a personal opinion. She saved his life. No, I mean, she did, but I'm just saying she, that doesn't necessarily mean he, should, he should get her a ring. Whatever. Like, firefighters save people's lives all the time. Like, they don't that, just different. propose to the firefighters. You're already in relationship with this <laughs> I'm person. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you have a traumatic He's experience one of them when you long haul boyfriends too, if you have a traumatic experience with someone. Whose house are you gonna stay at now? I'm just. I mean, he can get, he can get yeah. another lease. Yeah. I'm just saying, just gotta be careful with that. I'm not saying you know it's not a possibility. You just gotta be careful. In short, it's 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 amazing that something careful. so small, um, just that one random choice, saved his life. But um, it's an unfortunate thing that took place. And still surprises me that something like this could happen in America. But then at the same time, I'm not I'm not surprised at the same in, in the same respect. Um, it's just it's just unfortunate the number of people who had to lose their lives um, due to negligence. And yeah, I mean, negligence happens all over the place. I know, but you know, America puts itself on this pedestal that like, you know, everything is done by the book and everything is no. so much better here. No. Yes, they do put themselves on a pedestal. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I maybe I don't I don't I mean I, America's quick to be like we're the greatest country in the world and the other countries that are actually the greatest country are like uh y'all still don't have maternity leave anyway so um it's just 90 seconds it's that um and I don't, but I really don't know I know that the Delta variant has uh you know shifted gears and kicked it into overdrive and is really like really trying to get us locked down again so that's, we, we, we won't lock down again. We won't, but it's trying. It's putting in effort. So, you know, be safe. I think they, they're, the CDC saying, you know, even if you're vaccinated, put that mask back on. Indoors, yep. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll lead to another stimulus check. <laughs> That's really my, like, and I, 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 I think the stimulus, I think the stimulus more. checks are I don't are need done. it. I don't need, need it. No, we, we don't. But yeah. I'll take another stimulus check if they're definitely, if they're just passing out money. Definitely I'll, take one. If, I'll take if, one. If but I don't pass, need. I'm passing one. out. I'll be okay. So yeah. yeah. Other than that, I don't know what else. It's hot still. That's all I got. Yeah. So I'm gonna do my best to wrap in like a minute and thirty seconds. Um. You are wasting thirty seconds. I am wasting thirty seconds. Yeah. Thank so you too, if they, you knew. Oh, we got another subscriber. So we're at eighty two now. So whoever you are, we appreciate you. I think we'll get to 100 by the end of the year. DJ Khaled voice. That would be nice. 100 sub- YouTube subscribers by the end of the year. It's a goal. Book it. Hurry here first on Rush Vibes. Um, thank you for everyone uh, watching, listening. Hold us down. Vibe Tribe, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for still watching pre-recorded episodes, even though you didn't know uh, that they are pre-recorded. But we are back live now every single Wednesday. Episodes drop. So um, Until October. Until October, yes. And because there will be another Cause someone I'm else, a higher, a higher priority here. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. We are very happy to be back, back in North Carolina, back together, back in front of y'all. Um, so we love you guys. Uh, thank you. Stay safe. See you next week. We out. Yeah, I don't care.
way too far. Stop me now. Stop me now. Now they bring me this far to let me down.